Hello. Careful measurements have been made of Olympic sprinters in the 100 meter dash. A quite realistic model is that the sprinter's velocity is given by Vs equals A times one minus E to the negative BT. A and B are constants, constants of this, uh, of this model. So the time is in seconds, the velocity is in meters per second, and uh, A and B are gonna be used to feed the velocity as a function of time of the sprinter. For uh, Carl Lewis, who ran at the 87 World Championship, we had A equals 11.81 meters per second. Remember that this is not an acceleration, it's just some parameter. That's why it has units of meters per second. And B, 0 0.6887 um, inverse seconds. Okay, so Uh, part A ask for Lewis's acceleration at T mm. I guess for acceleration I'm going to use a let's use the other a okay so this is the parameter a and this is the acceleration Okay, so the acceleration is the derivative of the velocity with respect to time. And we are given the velocity. So this is just the derivative with respect to time of this whole thing. Okay. So this is a constant. We can take it out of here. You know, the derivative is not going to affect it. So let's put the A over here, derivative with respect to time of this thing. Um, now the derivative is going to act on this one and on this one separately. But the derivative of a constant, so in this case of one, is zero. So we can forget. I'm not used to doing the a this way. So it's just going to be negative a, and then the negative comes from this sign over here. Uh, I also took it out. The derivative with respect to time of e to the minus b t. Okay, and we know it's kind of the definition of e, the um, Euler number, the derivative of e to the u with respect to u is e to the u. Okay, so it's almost what we have over here, but we have to make a substitution. So let, let me use a different color. Let uh, u be equal to negative bt. And this means that derivative of u is gonna be minus b derivative of t, right? We take the derivative here and this is, the, this is a constant. So this is the only one that we have left. So dt is equal to du 
minus du divided by b. Okay, so now we can do the whole substitution in here. Uh, this is gonna be equal to minus a, the parameter, the derivative with respect to, so this is gonna be a negative over here. So we put, uh, we put it over here, du, is b is in the denominator. So we put it up here in the denominator. And then we have e to the u, okay? And this is what we have over here. So this is just equal to a, b, e to the u. Now we can substitute back. So the acceleration is a, b, e to the negative bt. Okay, so now we can use um, the values, the values of a and b. Um, to get the acceleration at zero seconds. So it's gonna be 11.81 meters per second times 0 0.6887 per second. And so you get the meter meters per second squared. Then E to the negative, well, it doesn't matter because it's zero, the time. So this whole thing is zero. E to the zero is one. Okay, so then it's just this multiplication. And let me just grab my calculator. It's going to be uh, eight point thirteen. There's more trees, but meters per second squared, as you will expect from the from an acceleration, okay? So let's see, I'm gonna put it up here. Acceleration of zero sec, um, the other A. Acceleration of zero seconds, uh, 8.13 meters per second squared. And then the next one is acceleration at two seconds. Okay, so two seconds. Uh, we still have this number, uh, A times B, which we know is 8.13 meters per second squared. So I'm just going to replace it in here. And then now we do have this factor, E to the negative, 0 0.6887 per second. And the time is two seconds. The seconds go away as they should because uh, the exponent doesn't take units in its argument. So it's just 0.6887 negative. 0.6887 times two, and then we do e to that number. So this is, um, well, I'm gonna put it in here, negative 1.377. And 
that's equal to uh, 0.25 times the 8.133. That's uh, 2.05 meters per second squared. So we can put it over here. Okay, and the last one, we want to know the acceleration at four seconds. So we know this one, we know um, the other one. So this one is gonna be negative 0 0.6887 per second times four seconds and the seconds go away as they should. So this is just times four. So that number is equal to negative 2.75. E to the uh, negative 2.75 is Uh, 0 0.06, and we multiply it times the 8.13. And that gives us 0.517, so uh, 0.52. Again, meters per second squared. So we can put it over here. Okay, so we just took a derivative, that's all we did. And then we uh, we plugged in, you know, the, the values of A, B and the time. So let's plot this graph if we could. Right, so. Zero seconds, two seconds, four seconds, six seconds. Say this is uh, the acceleration. So it's gonna look like this, and then at two seconds is about two, four seconds is about half, right? So it decreases as a negative exponential. So, um, you know, initially the sprinter, this dude, Lewis, Carl Lewis, his acceleration is, you know, pretty impressive. And then uh, he reaches, you know, kind of his maximum speed that he can attain, uh, probably at around six seconds. You know, after six seconds, he's pretty much at constant uh, velocity. He's not accelerating anymore. So, you know, this is pretty cool to see. Okay, so um, let's look at part B. For part B, we need to find an expression for the distance traveled. Uh, at time t. So we still know these. We are given a velocity, okay? And we are asked for uh, the distance as a function of time. So when we wanted to find the acceleration, we took the derivative. But if you want to know the distance, we need the integral, right? Because the definition of the velocity is 
derivative, I'm gonna say x or s, it doesn't matter, with respect to time, right? So we can move the dt over here. And we have dx. So if we integrate over here, we get the distance integral of dx is x plus some constant, but we're going to put it at the end. And here we integrate as well. Okay, so we, we integrate on both, both sides. Okay, so let's see, we're going to put the a in here and in here. And this dt is multiplying both of them. So we can do integral of a dt minus integral of a e to the minus bt dt. The a in both cases, we can take it out. You know, it's just a, a constant. And the integral of dt is just t. This is a t. Okay, so almost, let's see, this is x. So the um, integral, this is also a well-known integral. Um, integral of e to the u du is equal to e to the u. So we need to make another substitution. So let u be equal to negative bt. Then same as before, right? du is equal to minus b dt. So that implies that dt or du divided negative du divided by b is equal to dt. And we can make the substitution here. So it's going to be, and let's forget about the a for a little bit. We're just worried about this integral. It's going to be integral of e to the u minus one over b, so this one, du. And, you know, based on the definition of the integral of the, um, of e, this is negative one over b, e to the u. And if we make the substitution back, u is negative bt. So we can put it in here, okay? So this is uh, the integral. So let's put it in here. x is equal to a t minus, and we have a minus over here. So we can make it a plus. And we have a over b e to the negative b t. Okay, so uh, plus c. Okay, so that constant, the integration constant. 
And in this case, the integration constant is important because we know that the position at zero should be equal to zero. You know, it starts at zero. So in order to achieve that, A times zero the time plus A divided by B, E to the minus B times zero, and this is zero. Negative zero, still zero, and E to the zero is one. So that one stays there plus C. This is at zero, okay? So if you want x to be zero at t equals zero, you need c. This one goes away, right? That's a times zero. So it's just these. c is gonna be equal to minus a over b. You know, this is just the algebra there. So then we can do minus a divided by b. Otherwise, this will not be zero. You know, the position will not be zero at t equals zero. Okay, so this is the equation of the distance. And if you think about it, you know, we did pretty much the same thing that when we derived the, the kinematic equations, except that for kinematic equations, the acceleration was constant and here it is not. So the equation is a little bit more complicated, but you know you can still have the same elements. So let me see the solutions. So they they factorize this one so that it looks healthy A over B. So this one, they have to multiply times B, right? So they will cancel out and you have A times T. Uh, plus you have the A over B. So this is just E to the minus BT. And then you have the AB here. So this is minus one, right? And this is the solution that uh, you have on the homework. So yep, this is the your expression for the distance traveled as a function of the time. All right, so let's move on to uh, part C. Maybe I should not have erased the A and B. Uh, your expression for part B, this equation, is a transcendental uh, equation, meaning you cannot really solve for T, at least not directly. However, it is not hard to use trial and error to find the time needed to travel a specific distance. To the nearest 0 0.01 seconds, find the time Lewis needed to sprint 100 meters. His official time was 0 0.01 seconds more than your answer. So the answer is there, 9.92 seconds. So we can just you know, plug it in directly. But you know, if you didn't know the answer, you, know, you can probably start with 10 seconds, since typically the, you know, the fastest man on the planet they uh, run the 100 meter dash in in 10 seconds, a little bit less than 10 seconds. So uh, what was A? 11.81 meters per second and B. Um, 0 0.6887 per second. Okay, so A over B. Let's do X of 10 seconds. So that's uh, 11.81 
divided by 0 0.6887. So that's 17.15 meters, meters. Mm. Oh, this is just meters per second. And this is one over second. So meter, second, second, you cancel out the seconds and you get meters. Okay, good. Sanity check. Um, then the B, 0.6887 times the 10 seconds. Actually, I'm gonna put the 0 0.6887 times 10 seconds. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna move these ones over here. I run out of space. Okay, so this is, one over second, this is second, so we can cancel out the units. All right, so that's unitless plus E to the negative 0.6887 times 10 minus one. Okay, so this will be 17.15 meters. Uh, 6.80. Eight, seven, plus, so it's that number, mm, negative, e to the, okay, so this number is 0 0.001, so it's pretty tiny. and minus one. Okay, so that is 6.887 minus one. This one is too tiny, times 17.15. And we get X of 10 seconds, uh, 100.96 meters. Okay, so we know that uh, this S should be a little bit smaller so that you get exactly 100 meters. So we know the answer, let's just put it in there. Nine point ninety two seconds. So nine point ninety two. 9.92. This one doesn't have much of an impact, it's a very small number, the exponential. Uh, this one makes a little bit more of an impact. This number is the same, the one in front. So it's just these um, 0.6887 times 9.92. Um, then they'll give us 83 here, 83.2. This one's gonna be tiny, so it's gonna be negative one. So, this one will give us uh, 100 point zero two, which is, you know, pretty close to 100. Okay, so, you know, uh, this might have been a bit of a long problem, but the take home message is you differentiate the velocity with respect to time to get the acceleration and you integrate the velocity or the, the definition of the velocity uh, with respect to time uh, to get the displacement. And the procedure is completely general. It doesn't matter what function you have. Um, it could be something simple like the one that 
gives rise to the kinematic equations. It will be something more complicated, but the procedure is the same always. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the problem. Thank you.